Buenas tardes a todos. Eh, yo en primer lugar. Well, first, I wanted to to show you, to speak to you about the three sampling events we've carried out in Extremadura. Also, I can thank farmers and uh, companies cooperating at the different uh, moments of sampling. Without the, the plots, it wouldn't have been possible to do it. Both Oleiza, where we did the development of space uh, variability for the sampling of uh, uh, water condition, water balance, and down to the BIOS company where we uh, did a showcase of an irrigation system which combines uh, moisture probes uh, and um, uh, farmers would uh, uh, register, would record the, the high moments and the lower moments in the slope of irrigation so an electro valve could be programmed. Also, uh, we want to thank the Conesa group because we also did a showcase in the tomato plantations. They have large uh, tomato plantations in a, sex, in a 60 hectare plot out of a 200 hectare estate. They, they did the testing. And I'm going to focus on these two technologies samplings where we were wanted to, to start from one of the gaps uh, I mentioned this morning, the gaps found in the uh, management of uh, first decision irrigation, the heterogeneity in the development of the ground and in the plant when drilling, when handling the irrigation and the difficulty of choosing representative spots so uh, farmers or management or, or engineers could take samples for, for example, leaf analysis. The uh, soil for soil heterogeneity, we use this plot. This is a 200 hectare uh, estate. And uh, the objective was to see how it uh, was uh, uh, subject to shifts and uh, we look into how uh, the spots would be chosen and also, uh, of course, in, in intent to, to measure the nutritional state and the digital condition. Apparent electrical conductivity was uh, the main point of interest with uh, measured with a EMI sensor and that uh, the electrical conductivity has got to do with the texture of the, of the soil. So we could see where water would become accumulated in the plot and where it was uh, subject to deficits. Two of the tools we use, both in tomato and olive groves, have been meant the use of sentinel satellite uh, uh, images which would show, it would uh, bring to light uh, that variability in the soil, the heterogeneity. So we would recommend the farmer to use a picture from, from the year before, which would show a difference in terms of the development of the plants. And depending on the differences, they could select the spots which would be used to monitor uh, plant condition and uh, nutritional condition of the plants. And thanks to uh, the satellite, with the two satellites we have today, engineers uh, can have uh, an, uh, an image of the plot every three years. In tomato, for example, finding out the different stages is fundamental. So the irrigation dosages and fertilization dosages are quite important as compared to the traditional growth slope. And they can identify if the plant is growing or if it is not following uh, a normal course in terms of evolution. And using those images, rows from the uh, 
taking into account also the NDVI image from the former year. We can have the shadow areas are uh, good growth, uh, yellow areas are small growth, and uh, green areas would stand for average growth. So some areas uh, were designated as intermediate, uh, uh, most productive or least productive, and also we match that with that conductivity data. We're talking about 60 hectares. So we selected the spots for sampling where we monitor the different sensors and nutritional condition of the plant. These are the different sensors we used, both for the whole of the analysis of the soil and plant for the development of the crop, different methodologies for comparison, and spectrum uh, sampling sensors for the plant. The most significant data we drew were that this is a way in which traditionally farmers would assess the soil or the growth of the crop through the shadowing of the, uh, of the ground uh, through canopy reflectance and that was compared with a mass sensor such as a cross cycle and with a satellite and we saw that the area we had identified as compared to the year before uh, it was easily identified with the ones with the least uh, the smallest development so uh, irrigation could be adjusted to differences between the zones also very fast this helped us adjust the relationship uh, drawn between NVD and uh, shaded uh, uh, ground so we could get information of the coefficients around the cycle. So in terms of using theoretical tables, uh, FA56, etc., that coefficient can be adjusted depending on the growth of the crop. So the satellite image uh, can show whether it is uh, the coefficient of the NVDA coefficient would be 0.5. And this technology, we compared it with other relationships we had established as compared to uh, shaded uh, uh, ground. Uh, the mass measurement technology was the fruit of an exchange we had with the IFAPA with the LISA uh, group in Granada and uh, the group uh, called and the Linden's group uh, through the use of electrical conductivity measurements. This meant just uh, placing the different uh, uh, spots on the ground measured through satellite and you may see that thanks to different images we could identify the different developmental stages and readily identifying the, uh, av uh, the average and final or the medium and final stages and because of temperature the theoretical slopes can shift to the right or the left depending on the uh, meteorology depending on the weather so for example we should be uh, having a shading on that side but then uh, because of the air maybe 15% uh, less of water was applied. And the relationships uh, we obtained between the, initially, the initial spots that we correlated all throughout the cycle with the different measurements. I don't know if you want to have more information, but uh, posters are outside one spot meant uh, comparing the different nutritional conditions and you may see the results we have done, obtained. But another relationship was the one existing between one month before harvesting and the expected production. Not direct production because it is impossible to know the final production you are going to have with the NVDI. But it can let us know 
the areas which are going to be more productive. So with this technology, the farmer may identify which will be the areas with the biggest productivity and maybe if they have, uh, they have not so much time, they may see where to do the harvesting before. Relationship, relationships were above 0.7 before the harvesting and that uh, information gathered was very positive in terms of the planning of the harvest. But it is true that that which we have identified as uh, uh, more productive areas, that uh, these areas uh, on the next year, uh, we repeated the identification of spots. Uh, we had identified uh, where the plant would uh, grow better, so farmers could adjust the irrigation depending on the area and knowing where uh, the crop would uh, have better growth. Well, that's it. These are the conclusions. The same I, I mentioned. Thank you.